But on the outside were all a beast, the line, a piece of iron, everything with evil grind. See, your heart wants to face the high division. But the eyes never lie to a witness who takes them out to visit. And we wonder from the outside, but they listen or even try to hit the side and cries of breath. And even though there's a smile on my face, there's a load on my shoulders. And just know that this is only my hope. I like that. I got the free shot. Some dumb shit to say. But with his poetry, I'd be like, that was some shit you went to. Right? It's not, it's not, I'm not like a novelty, but I'm, I'm not like one of those people like you can go to and be like, hey, can you write something for my Christmas card? Like, I, I'm not that guy. You know, I, I like a lot of my, a lot of my, a lot of my, a lot of my, if not all of my poems be like prophecy. Like, they choose me. Like, it ain't something that I just sit back. I'm not the type of person to sit at the table with a pen and pen. Like, I don't write nothing down at all. Like, Cause I'm like, the all my day stuff is coming my head. And then a lot of times like, I just find myself like living the things I wrote about. Like, that's why like, like, I'm like, just crying on stage, I'm trying to perform. And I'll be on stage crying because I'll be living, I'll be, I'll be doing a Hey, so look, at the bar real quick, yo. Hey, at the bar real quick. Like, hold on, good. At the bar real quick. Like, you got a show going on? Thank you, appreciate you. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's dope. I think you're a good, uh, a way to be like, uh, you like a fucking novelist. Like a novelist? <laughs> right. Not a novelist, though. Right. A novelist. I kind of like to see myself as like a, a cross breed between like Usher and Marvin Max. Yeah. Just think of the Usher shit. Right. I mean, I mean, good shots. Like, you're the team, both mine. Going down tonight. Right. Right. Oh, 
story, nigga. I already embarrassed myself for the minute. Opposite direction on a football field. Like, you wanna like put salt in my wounds and chase me to the parking lot, bro. Like, they even let me come inside the locker room at night. That's not fault, man. I find like, three dudes need to get my stuff out of my locker, man. I'm like, needless to say, I stay real close to him nowadays. J Ray, all of you. I'm gonna take some shooting glasses. <laughs> Fight, and he watched the whole play go down. I didn't set the girl up, all types of stuff. He watched it go down, so he said at the end of the night, he said, you know you fucked up, right? <laughs> I looked at him, I said, hey, you know what happened? He's like, no, oh, you're supposed to have this shit like that. That's how you're supposed to do it. Right. <laughs> this nigga's a gangster. Exactly. <laughs> and we been so cool, he's so cool. He, he a sweetheart, he would never think like, you got a temper, a really bad temper. Wouldn't that pretty be like that? I built a, a app for him, right? So I'm like, you know what I'm saying? The way I have it is on a payment plan, you know what I'm saying? You gotta pay me by a certain date every month. This nigga was the one nigga that I just said, you know what, I go ahead and pay it for him. I just wait for him to pay me back. <laughs> right. Like I did not want to call this nigga and be like, hey, uh, you right. know it was. Right, so basically, that's what you know what that reminds you, man. <laughs> he got a good reputation, he good. Right, you know what I'm right. saying? But yeah, there's it's just some people, man. They just need a whole lot of leave alone. Right. Shout out to Jay. Shout out to Jay. Hey, but I will say this, though. That was probably the, one of the best business people I've ever dealt with. Right. Speaking of professional, always handle a business. You know what I'm saying? Like, shit, no matter what it was. So, salute to you, Jay, man. Absolutely. Right. You know you got to ask Hey, Hey, my little nigga, but after this last one, about him, he grabbed it. <laughs> you are a good man. We just um, I saw my late on my brother. We don't like you no more, but we love you. <laughs> 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 Alright, you dance and shit. Hey, you know my mom. Right, like, right. How you gonna explain this shit? Yeah. You know, this is my mom. <laughs> 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 we get into a fight. <laughs> Let's pray about it. Yeah, let's talk to you. All right, man. So look, let's uh, let's get into this. You know what? Um, let's have some fun, man. We got a special guest in the building. We got my homie, Mr. Will Blaze. So uh, Will, we gonna bring you to the to the couch. Yeah. Clap it up for him, y'all. Clap it up for him. Say, clap it up for Will Blaze. <laughs> Within that same atmosphere. 
So salute to you because of your growth and really like just doing what you do on a regular basis. That's right. You might think it's regular, but to me, you're superhuman in that aspect. <laughs> Word, wow. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Hey, oh, that's no bullshit. I appreciate that, bro. Absolutely. It's, uh, Grateful to God, you know what I'm saying? Like this is to God be the glory. Right. Y'all gotta be honest. You know? I, you know, I say I, I keep it all the way on the way 100 though because this ain't this is something that I knew I was gifted with. You know what I'm saying? My love for music is what drives me. You know, my, my love for the message and for you know good music being out there, soulful music. Like I'm an advocate for soulful music. I want you to feel that thing. You know what I'm saying? But so, you know. <laughs> all right, I appreciate it. I didn't know what you was going to do with it. Like, all right, all right, brother. Absolutely, but you know, um, I, I, it's, I appreciate that, man, because it, it means a lot to me knowing that I'm actually doing what I'm trying to do for real. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you're not trying to do it, you're doing it, but Absolutely, I appreciate that, man. I will see that, too. So this is what we're going to do, man. So uh, there's a lot going on in, uh, in our social climate right now. So before we kind of get into the one-on-one topic, I figured we could kind of like just do a, a, a group powwow on that. Is, is that all right, Charles? Is that cool? Mm -hmm. no. All right, so if you've um, been tuned into social media, especially today, there's a viral video of um, a guy, he's just so happy Caucasian, who um, reaches over the counter and grabs a lady at McDonald's and proceeds to get his ass whooped. Cause she she laid hands on that nigga like, oh my god! I thought she was trying to save the nigga, <laughs> but but she took him to a spiritual place. That's it, for real. However, that's not the only part that got me. The part that got me was how everybody around her handled the situation. And um, in 2018, like that shit just not cool. With me. You know what I'm saying? So um, if you haven't watched it, I'm just gonna give you a play by play. They're having an argument back and forth. He didn't get the fries in his bag. She said he got them. So he grabs her by the collar. And when he grabs her, she starts pop, 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 pop. She calls she connected some bitches. <laughs> so as she does that, everyone around her starts to like watch it kind of until it kind of breaks up on his own. And then they're like, they're checking on him, make sure he's cool. Then they check on her. And it was like, all right, that was it. You know what I'm saying? Like, the manager still took his order as he's cussing her out. So I'm like, okay, that's the problem to me with today's society is that we are so quick to embrace disrespect to not only our women, but women in general, you know what I'm saying, to keep it fair, that we can allow a situation like that to go down. Now, I'm, I'm starting to think, I'll take it to a whole nother level. Y'all ready for this? I really analyze this shit and I say, I might be boycotting McDonald's. Because Burger King don't get down like that. You see how Burger, Burger King, they, they pride it out there. Let me see what I'm saying. They got a whole thing out there. What the came off of fries? That nigga say, nigga, what's mine? <laughs> so I'm just thinking, this, you know what I'm saying? Like McDonald's, what's really good, son? But, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, what's your outlook on that? Oh, no, I completely agree. Um, I mean, you know, like, it, it looked like they was kind of trying to be escalate the situation, but they weren't. Like, I would have been, I would have been on trash. I ain't gonna lie. Like, just, just off the simple fact that we like, all get fired. You know what I'm saying? I got fired. Look at that. Like, I ain't gonna lie. Like, I, I mean, you know, everybody, everybody, you know, I'm trying to uh, come from a place of understanding. At the same time, like, they shouldn't have went down like that. Bro, you got it all. And I'm real, I'm real sensitive to shit like this. And when I see certain things, it's like, I can't let shit like that get in my spirit. So I just turn it off. I can't see people get shot at me. None of that shit. It's like, yeah, nope, 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 uh -uh, didn't see it. So, uh, but when I watch that shit, I'm like, bro, like, I'm just waiting on a dude to come from the left. Like, okay, bow. Something like, like, you know, like. But it never happened. It was like, <laughs> it just never happened. Like this so was supposed to be a world star situation. I'm washing the way I'm in the kitchen, I'm washing dishes, I got my body on, my R&B music playing, I'm dancing, sipping my wine. Mm. My son like, Ma, look at this. Man, cause I'm a king, boom, bop, bop, bop. To for a child to know that you yeah. were supposed to help that girl. Yeah, exactly. And they didn't do nothing, so, they watched. Even if y'all would have 
broke it up as soon as it happened. They could do nothing. They let that happen for so long. So they talk about the girl wanted by right. Oh, yeah, she's under the DJ. It was a flawless victory. It was a flawless victory. It was a flawless victory. Yeah, she definitely has a girl. This is how insatiable a miracle it is. To let him have, like, beat that girl up. Then it would have been a whole, like, he would have been a real situation for real. Like, say if she had a hit he would have told her. Then we would have been a big man march. Across the America. Oh, yeah, like, 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 I feel like her beating butt was like the best thing that could happen. Like, I agree. Like, that is true. I, I mean, I ain't going to even front. I agree on that too. Like, because he got his ass whooped by the girl. You know what I'm saying? But no, he's out still hands and feet. Like, niggas be relentless. That's the nigga moment. That was supposed to be a whole nigga moment right there. You know what I'm saying? At any time in American society, you know what I'm saying? We was granted a pass, it would have been that moment right there. <laughs> <laughs> like, you can't, right. listen, I, I would have protested that they could get grown up after that. <laughs> <laughs> like, wait a minute, why, why is that guy just asking me to sign this? I would have just made sure he didn't have no condom in. Drive, drive, man. Nigga, no salt for you, nigga. <laughs> but I, I say that to say because that brings up a, a bigger issue in our society. We are quick to allow people to disrespect our women. There was um, another story, and this kind of like just takes it to another level. In Houston, Texas, there's a, a, a guy, there was a, a lady and her daughter were going to the store. I guess she cut the guy off in traffic or whatever. Um, the guy pulls, cuts her off, blocks her in, pulls out a gun, shoots into the car, pulls off. Kills the little girl. This shit's right now still unsolved. But I say that to say, in our society right now, we have been so passive about our women. We're not protecting them at all. We're not, you know what I'm saying? Like, for, for situations like that to go down comfortably, you know what I mean? Like, and it's not the first time. And I, I doubt if it's going to be the last. That's just like in, um, in, uh, Bedford, when the woman, I guess they got into a fist of and the guy pulls out a rifle and she kills him. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's shit like that where it's like, this is this is an epidemic that's going on, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I, it, it's not a black or white thing. I'm, I'm going to say it's a gender male and female thing. Because without the woman, there's none of us. So we're not protecting our women. Yeah, what the fuck are we doing? Did you see the other video today that they had um, out on social media? The girl that made, it was like a group of kids at the bus stop. I want to say they had to be like 17, 18. And um, I smacked the girl in the face and the boyfriend just sat there and then another guy would walk up and try to help. And he was like, yo, this ain't got nothing to do with you. He was like, that's a woman, it doesn't matter. Exactly. And he told the dude, he said, get up and help your girl. And he was so scared and was just sitting there, I said, she might break up with him. Like, this is not the relationship right now. You can't be Some niggas don't deserve pussy. I'm sorry. Like, like, like I'm just there. Like, you know, by your business. I just couldn't understand that. He really, he smacked her in and again. Let's say you can't treat a woman like that. That ain't your man. That's your pussy. Right. That's your fucking pussy. Right. That's Breezy Block for everybody. That's Breezy Block. Right. See, see, Breezy. See, Breezy. See, 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 I see me laying there out before a nigga does that. That shit, for real. That, that shit was like the most diabolical shit I've seen, but in person. <laughs> but yeah, she be moving her ass in, talking shit about the dude, watching the nigga get the ass for real. Like, yeah, man, you a bad girl. Ain't no good person. Hey, the nigga be thinking your ass up and help me. Nigga just sitting there like, man, I, I was about to, nigga, I was putting the phone down. I was just like, 
Nigga, this shit's already, that nigga's already up, son. I was trying to get us to call the phone. <laughs> Bro, I'm star. I was trying to. <laughs> call back, I had to call back. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Got to loop it back around. Right, right, right. <laughs> but look, so, um, you know what I'm saying? Like, let, let's take off on that real quick. You know what I'm saying? Like, in, um, in our society, right, as a man, if another man, if I'm in line at McDonald's, and I see a man just completely disrespect the woman, I, I, I can't stand that person. I, it's, it's something in my spirit and my soul. I, I just look at it like, that could be my daughter, that could be my mama, yeah. that could be my auntie, you know what I'm saying? Like, and this ain't even about, once again, this is not about color. It's just about being in that situation. Now, don't get me wrong. This is where we at right now. So, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm just thinking different. That's the situation. Right. 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 That's the situation. That definitely takes us to a different level. Yeah. 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 They gotta be somebody. Yeah. They gotta be somebody I know, man. Like, if you somebody I know, like you connected to me, and I respect you, but I don't really know you ain't no time to push me to this. You probably stole twenty dollars out of this dresser. You know what I mean? I ain't saying <laughs> <really, laughs> like, you know, like, 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 I'm saying like, you don't know what's you going on in that situation, but at the same time, we didn't even say that, we were talking about disrespect. Yeah. We didn't yeah. say get her ass beat. Yeah. You said disrespect. If it wasn't my family, yeah. I'm going to let her out there. You said you going to let her get her ass beat? Oh, I didn't know that. She came proud, she proud to get stole 20 dollars. I was raised, I was raised to mind my own business. You feel me? If it's somebody y'all know, yo, yeah, I'm going to work for you, but ain't no telling tell them what she did for real. Yeah, I don't know. I got to listen. Hear me out. Busting ahead, I ain't gonna. I'm gonna fuck. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, in, in all cases, it's, it's a bad side. It's a bad side and a good side to everything. But it's not like the good thing about it. I'm stopping that shit. I'm gonna have to whoop that bitch ass behind the building. Like I'm driving down the street and I see it happening. I'm on my way to work. I'm like, uh, I got punched by. I'm gonna go for the burger. Any real man gonna let that shit go, no matter what you did, bitch. You can leave. Yeah, if I you, would. If you a man. Yeah, yeah and then if, if I'm in a situation, yeah, you got the situation like this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The guy out of Richmond, he did actually help a girl that was getting beat up by her boyfriend, and he, the, the dude that helped her um, got killed. And not knowing, not knowing said, that like, the girlfriend God. beat up his mother, and that's why he hit her. But you know what? It's, you can't hit a bitch. It's one thing for a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I don't know. She baby me or something. You know what I'm saying? I just look at it like, I, I think the line is, you know what I'm saying? Like, when you were in a public situation, I, I'm on both sides. You don't know, you know what I'm saying? Like, what happened. Like, I don't know what happened. Like, I'm not gonna say that I would have done the same thing. Yeah. Like, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because in a situation like that, where it's like just on, on some random shit, bro, you really mad about a burger, bro? Like <laughs> you that mad over? But you mad because you ain't get your fries, son? Like, like all right, McDonald's fries are fucking delicious, but they ain't worth fighting for. It. You know what I'm saying? Like, like they up like that, uh, like, and that's the other thing, like you know, there is two sides to it because they do use their masculinity to try to intimidate women and try to cause, you know, uh, a level of uh, fright and scare right. and trauma. Right. 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 Hey, so look, at the bar real quick, bro. I give it. Uh, I get it, bro. Like, I'm about to have a moment. Uh, no, be, don't be, be, be no moment. Be out there. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Yeah, what up, bro? Chill up, man. Appreciate that, Wes. Yeah, I, 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 I
And I mean, but I, McDonald's time, yeah, they should have jumped up. <laughs> yeah, I, they, they should have went all in. That, that would, see, that would have been a great team building exercise. See, that's how you know the niggas don't really fuck with each other off the clock. You know what I mean? Because if you see how she's running around afterwards, and look, she even said, she was like, now I guess I can go home. Yes, man, she just put it somewhere. Like, she just put it somewhere. 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 She just I, I think she should get a raise. She should get a raise. Hey, she put her hands up. Like, she should be the manager. I want to see that. <laughs> hey, I, look, I, I will say this though: the dude, did, the dude get, did get arrested, and um, they never said what happened to her. You know what I'm saying? But the dude get arrested, did get arrested. I just look at it like it's self defense. Was it Cleveland? No, it was in Florida. It was in Florida. I'm about to say it was in Florida. You go find that girl and sign a row with Philly Williams. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna get her the <laughs> Put some money behind I'm going this. I'm going There you go. All right. All right. So, uh, I don't know. I just, I just feel away. You know what I'm saying? Like, my mother, you know what I'm saying? Like, experienced a domestic violence situation. So, it's like just being a man who is kind of like came from that type of background and that type of environment, I just can't watch that shit. So. Once again, that's what I'm saying, where like, I get it. If she took the money off the dresser, disrespected your mama, or some shit like that, totally agree with you, my nigga, but just don't do that shit around me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't watch that shit. So, I'll be the victim, nigga, like, you know what I mean? Like, nigga, you don't call the body on me by accident. I don't know how it's not like racist shit up. I've reacted unfavorably in that type of situation before. Like, you know, I was younger, but at the same time, like, I still, like, I don't know. You know, but you don't want to put yourself in a situation too where you check out your family and your freedom and shit like that too. There's a whole nother, you know, it's just, it's a lot that goes through a rebel mind in that type of situation. But still, like, I, shit, shit's trash. Yeah. Know? I, I still say that nigga shit is this motherfucking powwow on that nigga. Like, that would have been. Listen, when he grabbed her, 
That was the best one I could pay for. Right here. Right here. These are not grown men. That's why they should step together and jump on that face. So they probably was in a position where they really didn't know how to react. If it was a black man, it would be different. They were scared because it was a white man. I can agree with that. I can definitely agree with that. I kind of disagree with that. Yeah, I actually disagree with that. I disagree with that. I disagree with that. I disagree with that. Black people doing wrong stuff to black people. Yeah. But if it's that white man, we sometimes quick to jump on that. Yeah. That's true. Um, okay, so let, let's tackle this, right? Show of hands, other people that's in here. If the guy was black and he grabbed you like that, would you have jumped in? Yes. I would have jumped in either way. Yeah, I, think I, think so. I think if he was black, even women would have jumped in. Yeah, and being yeah, a white man, mentally, people, they don't know who he might be, all these things he might be. People just naturally, that's why white men commit all the terrorism in America. <laughs> because people shy away from doing anything about it. Not white women, not black men, white men. I kind of get what you're saying. It is a little bit less expected, you know what I'm saying, uh, for a white man to do it to some degree. Like, we do have a stigma or a thought that it's not as common for that to happen to us, but it is at the same time, like, like as it two, is. As two black men, we can agree that it's more likely for us to jump on another black man than a random white man. That's just, true. I'll just, I'm looking out for you, my yeah. brother. Yeah. 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 When the last time you saying a bunch of niggas just jump on a white man? Yeah, yeah. But, but that is different because Unless it was a race black, type black people are mostly around black people. So if I lie to somebody, it's most likely gonna be a black person. Yeah, sure. If I fight somebody, it's most likely gonna be a black person. That's absolutely true. That's true. You know, the whole black on black crime and, and then black on white crime, is, which one is worse or whatever. There, you know, that's a stigma too. That's not really black on black crime and white on white crime are the exact same thing. They have the exact same kind of figures. You know, as a matter of fact, they fuck each other up more. So, you know what I'm saying, but at the same time, it's just there's more of them. They are the majority when you consider them as actual black people, you know. That's true. Not necessarily the whole diaspora, but you know. I think more so like in this situation, though, like what infuriated me personally was the fact that he just felt so fully bad a woman. On top of that, a black woman, you know what I'm saying? And everybody was just like, yo, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Like nobody really did shit. She definitely had it her own. However, she should have been in that situation. First off, it should have been diffused way before that. So, you know what I'm saying? Like to, I, I guess my, my main question is that, to, to your point, you know what I'm saying? Like, do, do we all feel like that actually like played a bigger role into why everybody was just like, what do we do? I do. I feel like every gang in America, from movie theaters getting shot up, schools getting shot up, um, Motherfuckers dying from selling cigarettes. These are all white men, white men. So in our mind, it's, it's a stigma. You know what I'm saying? You, like the, the guy in Florida, the hold your ground law, when you push the white dude over, and he stepped back because it's like a white man, and the white man was like, shit, I'm gonna kill you. You know what I'm saying? We don't do that. When we fight as black men, we don't push each other over and step back and wonder what's going on. Who's around? Is the police here? People only really do that for white men. That's what I feel. I just still feel like that whole situation wasn't a race thing. I feel like it was a gender thing. I feel like if it was a man at that time, he would have never grabbed him. And that's what I'm saying. Like he was just way too comfortable in that aspect. Either way, though, I think it had a little bit to do with both. I don't think it wasn't, you know, just gender related. It definitely was primarily gender related, only because of the fact that, like, once again, he felt like he was his masculinity. But I don't think he would have done that to, I don't think he would have did that to a white woman either, to be honest. I really don't. I really don't think he would have did it to a white woman, to be honest with you. He wouldn't have grabbed her. I don't think he would have done it. I really don't. Not like that. He really don't think he would have done it. <laughs> he felt he felt superior to that girl, exactly. not just because he was a man, because she was a little black that dirt. Like That's he, what he saw. That dirt. Like he looked like shit. Ass and he didn't give a fuck about a bitch. You feel like that about any woman? That's how you feel about women. That's how you feel. He looks like he beats his wife. I'm not gonna say. To me, it was a gender thing. I don't say it was just black people. I mean, I feel that. I just feel like it was more of a gender thing. I think he whoops his wife's ass. That's how I feel about it. I don't think he 
white man. He was too comfortable to grab her. He didn't look. First of all, you found 20 black men and you want to grab her? He didn't give a fuck. It was a woman. Right. And he's used to doing this. I That's think, what it was. I think it was a classic case of somebody thinking that it was sweet. Back when, we, when I was growing up, he said, oh, he thought it was sweet. 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 He yeah, the brothers ain't do shit. That's what we was talking about too. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I understand that. I still don't think it was a race thing. I just feel like I'm still recording. But yeah, it, it, it's just crazy. Like you said, you know what I'm saying? Now that I actually uh, look at it, because he didn't hesitate. He didn't hesitate. He didn't look at it. The minute that thought hit his brain, and he was like, oh. people look around and surround me before they do something.
Once again, that's corporate America. And that's why, you know what I'm saying, like, that kind of gets to my next topic. Um, are we, did we kill that? Are we good? Did we, did we kind of, did we, did we put a fork in that one? Basically, other than the fact that what you said is all the more reason why that nigga should have got his ass for me. Oh, yes. That's, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like, oh, he was blessed. He was blessed today. He got hands laid upon him. But I, I say that to say, you know what I'm saying? Like, our culture has, um, let's make it about race for a second. Because our culture has not really, like, positioned itself to protect, protect our women. You know what I'm saying? Like, We'll break them down, we'll demean them, we'll put them in whatever unfavorable situation, you know what I'm saying, we want them to be. And then, when they out in the world, you know what I'm saying, like we don't protect. There was a, 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 a 91 year old woman who got put out of her apartment because they raised the rent on her. You know, at that age, you're on a fixed income, you're getting your fucking essence on check, whatever it is. And you know how many motherfuckers roll past this woman until we stepped up and said, you know what, we're not gonna let that shit happen. You see what I'm saying? Like our community has to get back to those aspects and those values before we can even think about, you know what I'm saying, doing any fucking thing. This is my oh. and I have something to say about that. I, this is, I have a real issue when people talk about race. And it bothers me so much because that is nothing that we can do in this world. We're never gonna come together. We're never gonna get that shit right. It is about your the way that you grew up. It's just like me. And this goes back to how we always talk about how you grow up. I come from a family that didn't have anything, living in the projects. You know, I was a foster home, foster home. My mother did drugs, my sister always did drugs, my father did drugs. Then in prison, 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 prison. But it's the way that we perceive ourselves. You know what I'm saying? White people can't help their background. If you're born in a racist background, it's that shit is in you. I'm from the hood. This shit is in you. No matter how much I dress it up, I can put suits on every day. I can wear my hair black. I like brown wigs. I'm from the hood. This shit is in you. That shit is in you. It's nothing that we can do about that. So when people try to debate about it, I hate it. It gets boring. It's annoying. It's aggravating. There's nothing that we can fucking change. All we can do is create our environment. When you have an environment around us, just like today, I, we have a million people that can come in here, but everybody is from a different background. But we have a common ground because we're talking, we communicate. Now, if a fight breaks out, and it's a white guy that's in our little thing right now, the first thing the person gonna say, well, why is this person, why is he doing it? Why is he doing it? So I, that's what I hate about race. It's really about the community that you create around you and the environment that you create around you. I hate everything that said. That the race thing. I just I don't know. I just I don't think that race. I don't think that with a lot of work, any change, anything, nothing doesn't matter. It's set. Yeah, it's about conditions. No, no, I mean nothing. I'm not saying nothing. Nothing's ever going to be changed, but that's that's so. It's so hard to change where it can be like, oh, let's but that's like people together because everything, anything that seems hard is like, I can't. So people just weak as fuck. Yeah. But that's why I'm saying change our environment. If it's all of us in the room, we can help each other. I mean, but we can't hurt the whole world. We can't save the whole world is what I'm trying to say. for people that grew up in that, like, babies don't see color. Or I don't see color. But when you're a child, you don't see color. And that's what I mean. You're, you're, you're raised on it. You're raised on it. Now that's, that's cool. But when, you, when you're grown and you're on your own, it's your discretion to each other. Oh, I, I, this is just a black guy, this is a white guy. He cool as fuck, he cool as fuck. I don't see what the fuck my mom and dad was talking about. That's what this is. That's what I'm talking that's about. Where it's your yeah. environment. That's what I mean. We always say like the stuff that happens on the internet. But then you know, people, the people at McDonald's today, they couldn't help their environment. You know why? Because they didn't want to. If I'm with y'all, I'm a part of my family. So all I can change is my environment. I can't change what happened at McDonald's because I wasn't there, right? But this is what where it comes in when you you know where you're around leaders and followers. If I'm around 10 people that's racist and I'm the only person there that's not, why would I be around it? It's what I'm saying. I have to create my environment and change my environment. I'm around y'all and it could be three people in here that might be racist, but after they leave, our best bet is to try to make them understand we cool as fuck. That's what I'm saying. 
So it's like, you know, when people talk about the way of the world out it's supposed to be, you know, it has to come to smaller groups to become a bigger group. But when we're in smaller groups like this, people are not having these conversations like this all the time. But when we make a platform to have these type of conversations, these white guys can see you know, they're cool as fuck. That's what I mean. We can't save the world, but we can save our environment. That's what I'm saying. It's a start. It's definitely a start. It's a start. It's that's, a start. That's, that's, that's the answer, you know, as far as like getting to that big goal. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That, that we have to start within the community. You know, I do feel like we can change the world to some degree. Um, but I mean, you know, we, I, I personally believe in the Bible and what's set in stone with that as well. So that's a whole other story. But. I feel like there's a lot that could be changed and a lot of things, you know, awareness that could be brought. Um, I do agree with you a lot to the fact that until everything is not going to change it, you can't expect um, everyone to have the same perspective and awareness that you have. We have to approach things in love, period. You know, I feel like if, if, if we come at a, if we come at a, at a situation with, with a negative point of view and already passionate, you know, already bashing someone's perspective before they, they even get a chance to walk through the door, then how are how, how we that's expect them to receive us? Exactly. You know what that's I'm saying? That's what I mean. We always so quick to say, oh, this is a race thing. I hate that. That's like, it bothers me because that might have not been a race thing. That might have been like, I like me and my bitch ass. So, but we're so quick as a black person to say, oh, this is a race thing. And I, that's what I mean when I hate about the, what people thought the race thing of. It bothers me so much because, you know, you just don't know who a person exactly. is. Just because they're white, it might have not been a race thing. You don't know that, but the first, and we're gonna say that, because we, it's, it happens so much. And, and that's what I was about to say, we became so, uh, this, this becomes so common, that it is a race thing, that yeah. in this situation, it where it might not like be, you know what I'm saying? Like, 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 if we don't move forward, like, to me, like, just how I feel about race. Everybody from the 50s and 60s, they're going to die in the next 20 or 30 years. Soon it's going to be only eight people who aren't trail. That's how I feel about race. So hopefully it is. But outside of that, in 2018, the bigger problem is that all men are desensitized. 2019. Or 2019. <laughs> I, I, I have a personal problem with being desensitized to seeing any woman get punched on camera. When I was a kid, I'd never seen it, like on, like on YouTube. Like if I saw some shit in my life, that's my own thing. But as far as like kids growing up, just thinking it's cool for you. I seen a video of all black kids. This dude slapped this girl twice, and all his friends are yeah, trying to push, push the dude. Go, go fight him. Yeah. He's beating up your. This is us, and we cool with that because our kids are used to that shit. They seeing niggas knock girls out on camera, and that's that's yeah, bigger. That's, that's gonna bigger. be bigger than racism right. in twenty years to me. Because ain't nobody gonna be from the sixties no more, but everybody gonna be from the YouTube era where we knock girls out. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Or we not standing up for our women, or we just shoot niggas. And, you know what I'm saying? It's either one thing, it's not no just be standing up, being upstanding. Man. Man. You, you, mean, you either all the way this or you not. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? You with the shit, you, you trying to go shoot somebody in the face, or you not. You not, right. I know you gotta start somewhere. Like, we gonna keep on this game. We gonna move to the next thing. Hey, look, we gonna bring Breezy Blanco up to the panel real quick. So, I'll start with this one. So, uh, I got a check. Hey, come on over. Oh. Everybody give a round of applause for Breezy Blanco. And they gonna watch this shit back like, nigga, that was six claps. That's what happened. That was six people in the phone. That was six people in the phone. Yeah, one more time, one more time. Hey, I'll be clapping. But, um, I'll be clapping all night watching it. <laughs> but no, I, I just look at it and I say that um, even to his point, you know what I'm saying, we've become so desensitized and shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I never thought about the damage that's being done to the youth now because they are being desensitized to the new norm. You know what I'm saying? So I do believe that, you know what I'm saying, to his point, that might be bigger than racism coming but, up. And this, this was the that's point I was saying. Like, I hate that we so focused on racism when it's 
against each other right now. Like it's our background where we're coming from, our upbringing. We have to change our upbringing. Like my kids are not allowed to be on social media. They sneak on social media. And every day I'm taking their phone and I'm blocking their social media because it becomes it comes from our background. You know, if I wasn't raised in the household I was raised in, I wouldn't be as strong as a woman as I am today. But it kind of take into my negative side too because I'm so quick to fight. I'm so quick to have this anger problem. But that comes from my upbringing. So what I'm when I meant what I said about that, when I keep talking about the racism thing, I hate talking about it because we have to the more energy you put into that, the more energy is gonna bring to this person. It's gonna keep coming, it's gonna keep resurgent. I want to help our upbringing, our background, our environment. That's the only thing that we really, really need to change. Because at the end of the day, if you don't like me, you don't like me. Racism is just, just like you black, I'm black, you don't like me, I don't like you. Period. The only thing that we can do is save our kids. Like, yeah, that's where I feel like um, y'all saying being desensitized, that's where I feel like your upbringing is brought in at because it's not about what's going on in the world. You don't automatically adapt to that. Like, if that's not what you know in your home, and you know what I mean? You, you know, you go by what you learn from your mother and your family. Like, you don't just adapt to shit. Get bitches get beat up. We right. don't adapt to stuff like that. It's you know it's a mindset. But do y'all feel like that with our uh oh. Twitch? Alright, cool. <laughs> do y'all feel like that with um our current state of where we're at, you know what I'm saying, like correct um attention has been placed on just the core values, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I saw something so dope. Um, Kate Michelle had posted a video of her taking her son to set up his birth bank account, and then she said, and I also bought him a piece of land. And it made me think about something. Our great grandparents had it right, because they were focused on the right shit, buying land. My great grandmother bought 21 acres in Tallapoosa, Georgia. And to this day, our family is eating off of that. You know what I'm saying? Because our our ancestors saw some shit that we are we took our eye off the ball at. We're not even paying attention to it. You know what I'm saying? Like it's people who would drive a hundred thousand dollar car, but would still rent a rent an apartment. So I'm trying to get to the bag. What? But what are you doing with the bag? You see what I'm saying? And that's that's the point I'm trying to make, and that's the point I'm trying to get to. We, we lay so much emphasis on things, you know what I'm saying? And I posted about this not too long ago. We, we look at things and we be like, oh, that nigga killing me. Not knowing that that nigga's in debt. <laughs> right? You know what I mean? And, you know, people, you know, a lot of people think you can't just look at it. Nah, it's material things. Kids look at that stuff and they think it's everything. Like, my son made a comment about, he came downstairs and said, praise Allah. And I said, where did you hear that from? Do you even know what that means? And he was like, no, Kevin Gates said it. And I flipped out. I flipped out. Because I'm just like, but this is, but like you said, our great grandparents didn't have social media. So they, they didn't have all of that influence of stuff in their face. If they saw somebody in the fur, they had to go to the juke joint to see that person in the fur. You know what I'm saying? Like they didn't have all of that access right there in their face. And like these kids don't know the difference between reality and you know false reality or it's a beat. Because a, a kid yeah. and nowadays they can go astray and so yeah. Because I like uh Nick Cannon had a video about him saying that, you know, his woman didn't have to work if you know he had a woman she didn't have to work. And I let my kids watch it. And you know, he but the longer version of that was him talking about how when he first got into the industry and got money, he had all these chains and this flashy stuff and all that. And then as he got around other people, he realized that he needed to invest his money and he owns all of this Hollywood stuff and, and you know, he doesn't dress like that anymore. And I said, now you know, to y'all, y'all would think that Nick Cannon had fell off because he don't have a chain down to his nuts. But he really got a lot more money than a lot of these fools that y'all sitting up here idolize. But that's where I think I think that we're wrong. You know, like even when it comes to teaching our kids about how to respect women, there's nothing.
something in social media that's praising women. Nothing. The, the music demeans women. The women demean themselves getting on, on um, you know, my son got a screensaver of some girl halfway naked. And I'm like, there's nothing that's promoting love. I saw the screensaver. Shut up. <laughs> there's nothing promoting love. You know, in the 90s, all of this disrespect and, you know, stuff, you know, men took care of their women. They weren't afraid to run to the woman's house and stand outside her window singing. You know, they weren't afraid to show that. So our kids now don't see what it means to really love and respect and, you know, have a real relationship because the current, the culture, everybody is afraid. I can't post you on my social media. That's just why it's so you know, important to report boundaries yes. to your child. When you have boundaries, it doesn't matter what the fuck's going on in the world because this is what's going on in my house. Right. And all my children know that. I got bank accounts and I've been buying land myself. Like, I'm glad I learned early on because my parents didn't teach me that shit. I had to figure it out myself. Um, so, you know what I mean? People don't understand that you can buy a piece of land for less than $100 now and a couple years down the line it could be worth, you know, depending what area. Like, people don't even think like that. Nowadays, we just like transform into working and and living to working to live, eat, get a big clothes in your back, to do it all week. Like what we need to instill in our kids today is not to go to school and go to work. That's the that's the problem. People say that you have to go to work to do well, to pay your bills and all of that. My kids know that they're not never working for a motherfucker. Ever. I have my kids, they sell their own stuff now. My, my, my son and my kids can't wait for the summertime. Say, Mommy, can we sell stuff on the card? Is that for <laughs> you know what I mean? That's that's where you yeah. start teaching them. When you teach them to work, they're gonna be a worker. You raise your kids to be a boss, so they people work for them. That's right. the end of that. Once once that's in their brain, that's a, that's a mindset right there. You know? I, I tell you what, um, raising two teenage boys, that shit's hard. You know what I'm saying? Like especially the motherhood. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? <laughs> It's hard. Is it? I got to agree to it. Listen, but it's, it's like because you're constantly combating home, which they hear every day. And if y'all can remember what it's like to be a teenager, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're like, man, it's so much shit that my dad was telling me back then, you know what I'm saying, that I wish I would have paid attention to now. But because it was him saying that, I was so used to him saying it, it just didn't mean shit to me. If a Kelly Gates would have said it back then, they're like, oh, hell yeah, I'm about to go look at this land. Because we're, they're so impressionable at, at those ages. It's really important what you, how you communicate with your children, because they will close up and it's like, oh, this is my dad talking to me, this is my mom. Like, you got to make sure that you don't become too much of a parent and chastise them so much that they are afraid to open up to you and talk to you about things that's going on in their life. Or, you know, you still have to be that friend. You still have to, like, when I, nowadays, like, when I, nowadays, I always tell my children, you lie to me, I'm going to beat your ass. I don't care what you did, you tell me the truth. So, Let's talk about it. So, Let's talk about it. Now, ask me what I'm wrong about this. My son is in school. Uh, my girl was in there, he kept picking on her, picking on her, picking on her, picking on her. And he was like, well, that's why your bun hanging to the side and you ain't got no hair in the back. You need to tell your mama to fix your hair. You heard so you I say that on the phone to somebody. I came to the school and the teacher said it like he was in trouble. I was like, okay. I was like, he told her the truth, right? I said, now you go apologize and tell her that you didn't mean to hurt her feelings. Don't apologize and tell her the truth. Did you say that? Absolutely. The, so he went over the there. Yes. He went over there and apologized and said, I apologize if I hurt your feelings. But I don't, and I didn't mean to tell him the same whole thing he said, but I don't apologize for telling you the truth. I said, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I teach my kids now. Okay. So, so that was a little counterproductive to what we were doing. They're really, really blunt when they talk. They, they, you know, I, I keep a, I, I like for them to tell the truth. And my little son, he tells the truth too much. He's like, yes, mom, I did do that. And I did say that. You know, but I won't say it to you now. Tell me, because 
you got so much stuff going on in this world. Yeah, the social social media, the government about the way to take us to a whole nother level. They don't need racism no more. We killing each other off. We're putting, you know, the music that we have out now are is, is taking us to a whole nother level. We're robbing ourselves. We're paying for Gucci, we're paying for Prada, we're paying for Fendi, we're paying, we're paying a hundred dollars for some shoes that a white man got on some fucking sketchers and he's sitting there buying clothes from Walmart and living his best life. We're struggling to buy these things, but this is what social media was created. Okay, so look, we, you, you can borrow what that means. So <laughs> but, 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 with the McDonald's <laughs> thing, there's so many videos that can go viral on Instagram. Why would it be that video go viral? You know why? Because it's supposed to be a racism thing. It's supposed to but, be going out there so we can get off track on what the fuck is really going on. I take you know, I, I, I take that one step further. A friend of mine, he uh said if you post a video of you at work and it's saying congratulations, my nigga, that video would get seven likes. But if you Post a video of you getting fired from your job, that bitch should go viral. Mm -hmm. Our society has become addicted to negativity. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I agree. You know what I'm saying? To an extent, that, that shit's became, it, it feeds something within us that just kind of keeps going. And for whatever reason, we're drawn into it. That's why I say I'm sensitive to certain shit. I can't watch certain shit. Well, motherfuckers break legs and no, that shit's not for me. Yeah, I start, I start <laughs> you know myself doing that shit too, man. I can't take it. Because you literally have to protect your spirit and you have to protect the things that you allow to get in within your system. And for me personally, when I see certain things, acts of violence, that shit's not appealing to me. I'm not, I'm, I'm struggling, I'm hurrying up. You know what I'm saying? I saw that video like 12 times before I actually fucking said, all right, what the fuck is this? <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? See, it's so crazy. When I see the video, I see the video my son showed it to me. And after that, I let it go. I never paid attention to it again because I don't want to create a part of my environment. Because with me, I live in a world where a lot of shit don't affect me. When I see shit on the internet, I'm not talking about it. It don't bother me. It's not in my life. It's not in my world. Did you say it to your child? No, when he showed it to me, I said, why are you on Instagram? He doesn't have a social media. Uh, yeah, because he said, why didn't nobody help her? I said, would you would have helped her? He said, yes. yes well, I said, but like I asked him, I said, would you would have helped because she was a girl? And he said, yeah, mom, I would never let nobody hit you. And you know, that was that was the only, and after that, I left my mom. I just don't allow a lot of stuff to get in my world. You know, like, that type of stuff comes, it's a distraction. That's a distraction, that whole video is a distraction. And no matter how we feel about it, and it is a lesson learned, you know, to so many people that so much stuff happened to women. But and that was the whole so point. many black men that stuff happened to other black men. That's a problem too. That was just a, it's a problem. Uh, just the point that I was sitting on for like the last 20 minutes that I thought we kind of moved on. Like, I don't care if it's a woman, I don't care if it's a man. Perfect story. A, a couple of days ago at, at a Dollar Tree. A guy came in there to bust at the cashier because he put the guy and girl out that his name was Sim. So he going off, I'm gonna kill you, I'm gonna kill you. So I'm like, all right, now my antenna is up. Yeah. I went to my car, I got my gun out of my trunk, sat in my front seat, and waited until that guy left. I don't care if it's a woman, I don't care if it's a man, if it's a girl. We should not contradict ourselves and think, all right, if it's a man on man, Fight, and it's okay because then where is we gonna lie? Okay, yeah. if it's a it's woman, but the same you know. anger that's gonna come out of me when I slap a woman is gonna come out of me when, when I punch a man. Yeah. I don't want that anger in me, and I don't want to yeah. see it come out of you. No, you know what I mean? So nobody's not gonna fight around me. Yeah. What's the way I'm him? Hey, I'm, I'm in between the yeah. 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 and that's probably something that should have happened at that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's exactly what they said. Yeah, it's a good time. You know what I'm saying? Like, between him grabbing her and, yes. you know what I'm saying? Like, where it could have been defeated. And I don't know if that goes on the, the manager, the security, or whatever. But once again, it should have never went down. It should have never got that far. I feel like if everybody thought things like that was a distraction and they saw it pushing away and things are still, nothing is being done about it. It's not a distraction, it's our reality. Mm -hmm. What's going on? It is, it is and I feel like 
you know, it ain't what you do, it's how you do things, how you perceive, how, knowing that these things are going on around you in our world. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's what you do. And now that I saw that today, I might not finish watching the shit, but it's something that I'm going to, you know, that's, that, that's something new that I'm going to take with me and my children or, okay, you know what I'm going to talk to them about today or, you know, some things I just, I feel like I don't want to see the shit, but I feel like I need to show my children. You know what I mean? I so feel, I can let them I feel like, talk to them about it. I feel like we got, I mean, it's just like, in general, we have to teach each other and of course our children, you know, um, how, to, how to use wisdom. Like, I don't think, I think yeah. that's one of the things that's lacking in a lot of everything in our lives, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's discernment, making the right decisions in the right circumstances, knowing who to help, when to help, how to help, you know. Um, making sure you're not ignorant. Making sure you're not ignorant, you know. Because that, yeah, yeah, it's you know, be, you don't want to be gullible or naive or anything of that sort, but you definitely want to make sure you the, the serenity prayer, God, grant me the serenity, accept the things I cannot change, but the courage to change the things that I can and the wisdom to know the difference, you know, like that's important. We have to teach our kids that, we have to teach each other that, like how to operate in these type of situations and diffuse this shit. Period, because like you said, violence across the board, it don't matter if you black, white, male, female, Indian, alien, don't matter. You know, we, we, we need to try to diffuse that shit. I mean, we all have anger, but we have to learn how not to act on that anger, you know? Again, I, you know, be angry, but do not sin. You know what I'm saying? Like, you have to know when to act on it and how to act on it. You know what I'm saying? It's really important. jumped on this white man. Absolutely. Yeah. But now, like, well, when you're really there and you're thinking about going to jail and your kids and what you got going in there, and I love, yes, I, I, I'm one of the niggas I love with that woman, but I will tell you right now, if I don't fucking know you, I don't fucking know you. Right? So, <laughs> I'm not going to do it. I mean, you ain't got to be a gal, but just how you grab her collar, you grab that nigga arm, what are you doing? Yeah, no, he would have been out there real quick, you know what I'm saying? He would have been out there. Yeah, like, 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 yeah, Do I fuck with you to get this man off you? Because I know the repercussions as an adult. Not even being a black man or none of that shit. As an adult, I'm 31 years old. If I go punch a nigga in the mouth and I get arrested, I know it be. It's what not what you do, it's how you do it. We but if it was me, I would have been in your head in the yeah. situation. Yeah. Now that's what y'all don't know. I don't know how y'all are doing it. There's a way to diffuse that situation. That's very true. That's my whole point, though. That's my whole point. You know, it's not something that you can know. It's 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 a it's a it's a learn. You can you know. Wisdom isn't something that, you know, isn't common in that age, but for why not? You know what I'm saying? There are cases where I've seen some young young adults that have made some very wise decisions and choices that, that have set them up for life. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not saying that everyone should be able to do that, but we can, you know, at least try to move the curve, you know, towards, towards positivity. You know what I'm saying? Like, we have to at least attempt to try to enhance that wisdom in, in, in everyone as much as we can. I agree with brother, and I'm going back to her point about the environment. If you think about a lot of white kids, they grow up in a household where the parent is teaching them something happening wrong, call the police. Yeah. We might say that, man, that's a coward, you know what I mean? But for them, they thinking, all right, if I jump in, something bad is gonna happen, yeah. or I'm gonna get blamed for this, but yeah. that's a wise decision. Yeah. So we don't have to say do it in that way of calling the police, but it is a way that we can raise our kids with, with saying this is how to do it. Don't, you, you don't have to go in there with being a macho man, but you can say, hey, go step in and talk to this dude. Get out of the Hey, bro, I know she's wrong, this and this and this, blah, blah, blah. But I do think that they need white people around them to tell us something. Now for the girl, I don't blame her, she did. She had to do that situation. 
she handled the situation. Oh, nah, she was on her own. Best, best to what she was probably taught. And that, and that was like, what else is, is going to come, come from it? Yeah. You know what I mean? But that's where older people like us, I guess, I guess I'm old, um, <laughs> uh, come in. Yeah, you know, yeah. to the, uh, Absolutely. Kids. Absolutely. So, uh, All right, so look, let's do this, man. So um, we have kind of been on these topics, these heavy topics for a minute. Yeah. Sure. So uh, so Will Blaze, man, uh, let, let's kind of get back to you. On a personal note, right. uh, first, you know, can we get a round of applause for her? Normally, you know, our guests don't really jump in on the topics like this, but we really appreciate you jumping in on the topic. You know what I'm saying? Oh, man, this is so, um, what, what about you have going on today? Oh man, um, it's, it's a lot going on. Um, we got a got a show coming up. Uh, what's the name of the spot again, Corlin? Social aid, yeah, that's Friday, right. January 11th. Yeah, you heard all of that. Yeah, that's what he said. Listen to my homeboy Eric, you know, my business partners, man. Um, we got some coming up. He's doing an album release. I'm on the label. Um, we got some stuff coming up. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, man. 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 Uh, but then I got a whole other project that's in, in motion right now that we're working on uh, with my homeboy Sean Charles, a, a producer, a friend of mine, dope producer, uh, producer of Vigatron, producer for uh, uh, Ron Royal, J. Floyd, a lot of different cats. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. All of that. Yeah. Nice, <laughs> nice. You know what I'm saying? So uh, we, we got a lot of stuff coming on, man. Uh, my homeboy called in, like I said, he released that the day driven video. He's in my video, new shoes. It's music out here, man. I'm trying to I'm trying to really push for 2019, man. Really get this product out here, you know? Hey man, um I was watching uh actually I was listening to a podcast, man, and the message on this podcast was like going into 2019, 2019 is the year of alignment. You know what I'm saying? Right. And um that's what it sounds like, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of people that, that I'm around, they're starting to align themselves, and you know what I'm saying? With, with the people who are supposed to be in their lives, they're gonna take them to the next level. Yeah. And um, here again, Chicago, you know what I'm saying? Y'all niggas, y'all been doing y'all thing for a while. <laughs> of course. I want to talk for a long time. Hey, leave, it to, leave it to a host. I just want to say shout out to the panel. I've been listening to everything y'all talking about. And um, one of the things I want to say, especially when my brother Will Blaze here, um, something that's fresh in my mind right now. Like when you think about what is being fed to our kids, because I'm an educator by day, entertainer by night, Will knows. Class. I'm gonna be honest with y'all, man. The radio is fucking up our kids, man. Because they hear that shit, they watch that shit, they go on IG, they watch Love and Hip Hop. Like I'm, I'm, a, I'm a product of that as an educator. They think that shit is real life, dog. That's why they act the way they act. I'm telling you, they really think that shit is real life. And like, let me tell you, man. Like my girls, my boys. Like my girl was in my classroom. When they come in there to talk to Mr. Warren, because it's Mr. Warren by day, Eric and by night, but when they come into my room and they grab an air and they bat their eyes and they do all that shit, you know what I do from a cultural standpoint to make it funny? I say, let me tell you something, sweetheart. Mr. Warren doesn't speak in the language of love and hip hop. You cannot grab air with me. You cannot bat your eyes. You can't do none of that because that doesn't translate. And then it opens the door for the conversation. He knows who I am. And then I start talking to him. You know, that's not real life, sweetheart. That's some shit that they get money for that is not even really in real life. And as me and my brother Will Blaze go into 2019 doing our music, I have realized something. I have a lot of friends in Cleveland that are making music about their real life. The first album that Will Blaze made in my studio, Exposure, was his real life. The album I'm coming out with right now, The Working Class Rapper, is my real life. But a lot of these people that the kids are following, that shit is not their real life. 
So we have to figure out how to translate that narrative to say, hey, this is our real life. When Will Blaze jumps on the mic and starts singing, that's his real shit. When Wall Street West does a poem, that's his real shit. When you listen to Arrogant's album, The Working Class Rapper, that is my story. So that kind of throw my shit in there too. So, but, but I say that to say, from a Cleveland standpoint in general, Frank West, you know what I'm saying, the voice. Don King, our brother, the voice. We got motherfuckers in Cleveland that are speaking their real truth. And I think when we get to that point where we say, hey, let's focus on the motherfuckers that are speaking their real truth, that bullshit will start to just kind of wade away. You know what I'm saying? So that's all I want to say. I, I'm simple. I'm simple. I, I think I think that like with music, it's gonna be like anything else. Like say for instance, like it starts off with like y'all making real music and people emulate that. Just like you know, a Gucci bag starts off real. You know, then like in New York, it might be the exact same bag, but it's not the real bag. That's how the economy works. Um, but I think with I think that as an adults, hell yeah, we should always move in a form of fashion where morals and values is in a, is in a situation where it never get old. But also, it's like, you have to recognize at the same time that life is constantly evolving. In a sense that like right now, how we talking about all the things that's messed up by society, at one point in time, we was moving in a certain way where another generation was saying about us. It's like it's like it's gonna constantly it's gonna constantly change, and it's like something we can't stop. Y'all you know I mean like we got that was one of the most dope, dope things Arrogant said was take the time out to understand the generation that you know. Like and then not only that, you know, add add to the like I, I'm I'm okay with some of the music that's out here, of course. You know what I'm saying? It's it's entertaining. You we have fun music. When it was coming up, they have fun music now. That's the same thing, but. I, the fact that it's saturated, don't saturate your mind and your ears with that. Like, listen to the real shit too. Listen to some good soulful music. Listen to some, some old school. Listen to some gospel. Listen to, you know, to a little bit of everything. Don't just, just sit there and veg out in that. You know what I'm saying? There's so much more, you know, that you can get from all of that, that, that those other types of genres that's out there. You know, even pop, like whatever, rock. Like, you can expand your mind. That's why I like coming. I ain't gonna even, I'm gonna do a plug for, for B-Side Shit Show, uh, karaoke. Yeah. For real, for real. Like, we be in here doing all kinds of different stuff. Like, whatever. And it's just like, you, you get to, you know, enjoy good music. You know what I'm saying? In lyrical rhythms. We in here, you know, performing different artists, like underground artists, like some Daniel Caesar, or, you know, you hear uh, Miguel, or, or, you know, like some stuff that, you know, you might not hear that's common out here. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's actually dope music and saying real stuff, talking about love, talking about relationships and understanding each other and all that type of stuff. Like, don't just saturate yourself with the bullshit. Listen to the good shit too. You know what I'm saying? And Bullshit's I, okay. Right. And, I, and I think too. that it's so important for us to recognize that with adolescents, man, they trying to figure themselves out. So like a lot of them don't have the wisdom, the knowledge to separate what's me and what's not me. Say for instance, like if I'm listening to you know, like Jennings, and I'm just rocking out to that song. It's just like I'm there, I'm somewhere mentally with that song. I'm not even about to see me listening to a, a Justin Bieber song, and then I'm just like living a Justin Bieber lifestyle. And my my nephews, they was raised in Cleveland Heights, but they feel like his Uncle West was raised in the streets. They got some type of connection, so they all on Instagram talking like, "Yeah, it's crazy, this and that." So when I seen them, I seen that. I said, you know what you're doing? Like, I said, this is a to take that serious. Like, you were placing your bees and this and that. So what I did was, I went and got to my homies is really affiliated for real. They don't play about it. I brought them around. I'm like, now I talk, not talking now. Yeah. Right. Now they yeah. looking crazy. I'm like, these cats yeah. take this serious a culture. And you gotta know what's, what's you and what ain't you for real. I can see it. Was, if, if you was raised in the middle of this, hell yeah, it's in your soul. But if you live out here in Cleveland Heights, Next to the brand new Macy's, bro. And you can walk to Macy's. If not only can you walk to Macy's, you can afford something in Macy's. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, okay. you know, like, know what's you and know what ain't you. Right. So, this is the thing. Remember, Jay, I hit you up. Okay, let me run this story down real quick. So, before I started the combo show, I hit Jay up. I was like going through my transition stage. I'm depressed. I'm going crazy. I hit Jay up. He's like, yeah, what you doing? You working on some new music? I'm like, uh, yeah, but I'm just trying to find, I'm trying to find
find myself. And what I mean right there is go back to what you said, you know, music, I never, like today, I would never see myself becoming an artist. And people hate when I say that because they're like, oh, you got dope music, you are one of the best female artists. And I, I like my music, but I don't like my music. You feel me? Because I make music for today, but that's not the music I like. So the EP I'm dropping is actually called Behind the Scenes in Front of Your Camera. So I'm dropping aside that the music that I want to drop that make me feel good, what I can speak life to these girls mm -hmm. that's going through the stuff that I went through. You know, I went through mental mm -hmm. abuse, I went through being raped, I went through uh, wow. being in foster homes, foster homes. These are the things that, when you have a voice when God blesses with this mental, and he blesses with this pen and this paper, he said, Katie, tell this story. Tell your story to these girls that are going through the stuff that you went through. Tell these stories to, to these boys that don't understand how to treat a woman. But society today don't want to hear it, right? You want to hear me talk about shaking my ass, taking my clothes. <coughs> and I can make that music. Right. I can make that music good. Yeah. But it don't make me happy. Uh -huh. When I hear it, then I'm in the studio. When I, when I hear it, and I'm in the studio, I hate it. I'm like, they're like, oh, that shit wrong. I'm like, that shit's fine. See, here, here's the thing. thing. <laughs> And this is actually going to break it down to the simplest form, right? What a lot of people pay attention to is a guy that gets the girls. What is that? The guy that gets the girls. Oh, he's talking about that shit? He's doing that? Oh, shit. That's where the fuck I need to be. I need to align myself with, with that guy. No, power though, it's always about, but that's, that's another example of, you know, power and quote unquote See, but, ownership, I hate to say that, but it, it is still, that's that's the thing, you know, there's still a level of quote unquote ownership with having, wanting to have multiple women and you know, the whole thing and all the different fly vehicles and clothes and all of that, like that's, and, and having that image, like you said, makes you cool, makes you powerful, makes you the top dog, makes you desirable, makes you what everyone wants to be. That's the American dream, you know what I'm saying? So that, again, is gonna be that perception where it's like, oh, well, however he did that, whatever you talk about, I wanna listen to, you know what I'm saying? Everybody wants to be the guy that gets the girls. <laughs> yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? And more than that. Exactly, more than that. Continue on the guy. <laughs> Yeah. You can get the woman you want on your dreams and you don't want that because it's uh -huh. not enough attention for you. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, again, if that's what you have to, if you have to, you know, it depends on the perspective you have of that. Like, again, if, if it's a possession, if it's something to acquire, okay, I've acquired that now. Just like I might have been, since I was five years old, I wanted a Lamborghini Contage. Like, that's old now, but you know, for real, that's what I wanted. When I grew up, <laughs> I wanted, right listen, now. I bet it is. When I grew up, and I thought if I was to get it now, I want, I want some fresher. I want, you know, a new Ferrari or something. You know what I'm saying? I want, I want, I want something fresher. You know what I'm saying? So, if that's the perspective that I have of that thing, that's what I'm after. Again, I want to acquire as much of that as possible. Because, again, that's what makes me cool. You know what I mean? <laughs> I felt the same way. Until everything that I that I thought would come from that came to fruition. I wanted bitches, bro. To be Absolutely. Young, but to be honest. Absolutely. To be honest, I used to think I wanted a Lamborghini until I was doing the things that I thought that I needed a Lamborghini for. Right. That's not what I want. Right. And, it's, and that's not what I want. But I had to see it and live it. Like, yeah. like he said, yeah. everybody wanted to be the nigga with all the hoes until you actually got all the hoes. Yeah. And, and nobody yeah. liked yeah. it. Yeah. And when you really got bitches and you get mad. Women don't even want to live like that. It's Absolutely. Hard to women, but it's hard to hear a man say, it's 20 women and I don't want to be with none of them right now because I don't feel. <laughs> men don't say that. Women do that shit all the time. It's niggas, I can replace them every day. That's how women are. They, they, they look good and they talk your ass. What do they make with? We come through and we take all the numbers, even if we got a good mind. We take your number. You know what I'm saying? No, no, we do not, no, sir. No, no, we do not, all right? No, no, okay, you no, speak no, for yourself, no, man. No, 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 no,
Yeah. 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 I agree. But that's wisdom, though. That's what you, you learn that through experience. Through, you know, you gain wisdom off of that. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, and I mean, there's different ways to gain wisdom. Is you know, experience or being taught, learning. You know, realizing. You know, wisdom is really nothing but the application of knowledge. You know what I'm saying? That's really all it is. Applying knowledge. So when you apply knowledge to a situation and realize that this is the situation I need to apply it in, okay, boom, it worked now. You know, I didn't, I could avoid that whole thing. I didn't have to go through it to understand that I didn't need that. You know what I'm saying? Every everybody, you know, again, it's, it's all it all boils down to wisdom for me, you know. It's hard for relationships though. Somebody can tell you, don't do heroin, I did it, you'd be like, oh yeah, sure. But somebody can say, hey man, just get one woman, you'll be like, oh, okay, maybe one day. You know what I'm saying? It's harder than relationships. And, and, and I, 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 anything else. And I got I got I got a backup to that. I'm I'm just I'm gonna piggyback on what you're saying. What it boils down to is just like in a life, man, life is so big, so imminent, so complex. In life, you really trying to find out what's for you is a journey for real, man. Like, it makes from the outside looking in, they're like, oh, I'm getting this girl number, I'm getting this girl, I'm getting that girl number. But I'm really trying to find me for real, man. I ain't about to, like, I'm trying to figure out what I like and what I don't like in this world, man. So it's like, once you obtain something, you might really, really want it, but once you get it, you like, you know, that's cool. But that's not just in a relationship, but I'm talking about things in general in life. Once you get it, you like, it might not make you as happy as you imagine. Now, I mean, because I've I seen girls that I was just like, man, that once I got with a person, it was like, they ain't had no water in their pool. Exactly. Now, I mean, they feel like they just pop the pussy up and it's gonna keep me around. But I'm looking for conversation, and I'm looking for us to be out and you be aware and have my back, and you like, got your head in the clouds. I'm like, she a liability. I'm gonna get somebody run up on me, you got your head in the clouds. I, I stood outside this broad car for 20 minutes. I'm, I stay on Kinsley. I just stood there just to see what she was gonna do. She texted me, mm, I got, I waved the girl. I sold some dope in front of her, man. I don't really do these things, but I'm gonna see what her awareness was. You know what I mean? It was out there, man. I had somebody in that phone. I'm like, <laughs> Yeah. I'm just oh, yeah, I'm just I'm just on the my point to the I'm not here no more. Only you, man. It's just all about a conquest in life, man. So it's easy. Man, life is so big, man. It's oh, it's so easy for us to approach every situation trying to be understood. But you take the time out to approach every situation looking to understand because life is so complex. Now, a lot Absolutely. of stuff makes so much more sense for you. Absolutely, bro. That's, that's what it all boils down to. All right, so look, let's do this, man. So, um, give yourselves a round of applause for the conversation, man. That's what the convo was about, man. We just like to talk about something. All right, that was the, that was the practice round from the clap shot. Not a real, the real round. Yeah, the real round, man. That was the warm-up clap. That was the warm-up clap. Hey, 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 and that's what it is, man, because uh, although it was a fucked up situation, you know what I'm saying, it opens it up for the dialogue. You know what I'm saying? Like, it took that situation to create a dialogue about that situation, which, you know what I'm saying, evolves to something deeper. So, uh, with that being said, man, let's get into something dope, man. Uh, real Blaze, man. So, you gonna bless us real quick? Mm -hmm. Tell us mm -hmm. about the single that you uh, about to perform. Yeah. Okay, uh, well, this is, this is gonna be a joint offer of uh, my new project. My EP, Lessons in Love, Volume 1. Uh, it's, a, it's a joint with, with a homeboy of mine, Ice Grill. It's called uh, Ghetto. Gotcha. Yeah. Alright, so shit, we about to get into Let's that. Get into that. Yeah. Uh, let me get it off the... DJ Off's chord is about to uh, put us together. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh shit, man. Gearing up for Bre Breezy Bronco, yeah, we got like eight, eight different colors in their joint, you know what I mean? Like, I like it, it looks great. Man! I know. Nice. <laughs> I just put my gray in blue and black out. <laughs> hey man, I got stories for Breezy, though. Jeez. Y'all, I, I call it Breezy. Breezy Blanco is like, man. <laughs> 100, man, 100. Hey, man, how y'all enjoy it? I know um, I've never seen y'all faces before, man. Y'all good, man? So, they you know game. Like, That's game right there. Huh? They game. Game? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. I'm like, whoa, wait, what'd you say? <laughs> <laughs> he said, I'm coming out of the 
up to the beast and I'm gonna come see you and he showed up. I'm so happy y'all came. Hey man, that's what it's that's about, man. So look, let me give y'all a little bit of background. Normally every Wednesday we're at Anthony's place in South Jiggy. So every first Wednesday we will be at B Side. So we're just trying to get this thing popping. Uh, there's different situations, you know what I'm saying? It's time to present this stuff. So uh, we just waiting on this people. So Breezy Blanco, just tell us about what you got going on too, miss. Holy shit, wait a minute. It was a dope set, too. Oh, for sure. So now I'm just thinking, you know, I'm excited about my um, remix of mine. I'll see where it takes me. Hey, man, it's a great place, man. So, uh, shout, shout out to the Mr. Klein. I was called Mary Um Look, I was trying to sound it out when I was looking at the logo. I was like, uh, Mio, Mio, Mio. My middle name is Amir Amiosa. Amir Amiosa. Mirror Okay. It's a uh, it's a liquid stand mat. Okay. So maybe you guys won't be getting caught up so much. <laughs> okay. Okay. Just to like rub off on your clothes and it's really cool. I like it. You don't have to reapply all day. Um is you know it doesn't matter. I'm gonna use I like the Sunday on a couple. Yeah, don't dry your lips out. Um like if you I like to I have something that I don't have color of yet because I'm just starting with six colors at the moment. No, I would take uh, a regular lipstick though, put it on and then take you know, one of my mattes. And basically, like, two of those are going to have a man. I have no idea what the hell you just said, but I'm going crazy. <laughs> that's what's up, man. That's what you want me to do. <laughs> but, uh, um, I, I want to say shout out to you because I seen your growth. Like, I knew you before you started staying. Like seriously, you know, well, I didn't know that you did. Yeah. So you know what? Okay, well, I feel like you owe me money too because all those fucking studio sessions, you could have got your ass in the booth. <laughs> it was something. Man, we'll talk about that shit later. <laughs> but um, no, shout out to you for doing that because um, you actually like right. your dose that you really pursuing. So um, without further ado, we good to go. Yes, sir. All right, yeah. so everybody, I want to introduce you from Lady Gary. Shouts out to you, just, just well played, well played. You can keep the music up. Yeah, keep the pump up. Hey. You can't relate, tell me where you from. Listen, whatever you want. 
down the block, you see on every corner another church ministry. With liquor stores all around and the plug on the louds in the same community. And when 12 pull you over and they don't want to listen, so you pray to God for mercy. Saying I'll be goddamned if I'll be another victim of police brutality. I'm talking about the ghetto. Yeah, hey, hey. But then, like, he goes, like, completely rock star, and then he goes straight R&B. Like, <laughs> like, it's the craziest shit in the world, man. And, you know what I'm saying? Like, but you do it seamlessly, and that's the that's what sets you apart from anybody else. Thank you so much, man. I grew up on all that shit, for real. My pops, he had me listening to all kind of, like, the widest spectrum of music you can think about, from Too Short to John Coltrane, to, you know, freaking uh, jo uh, Joni Mitchell, Janis Joplin, and all, all that type of stuff. So I got to I got to hear it all, uh, you know, the product of it all, you know. That's what's up, man. Hey, brother, once again, man, you do it seamlessly. So can we get one more round of applause for you, brother? That's right, thank you. All right, so um, Breezy Blanco, where do you got? <laughs> Alright, so look, while we while we working on getting Breezy song played, I, I want I had another topic that I want to talk about real quick if that's cool with y'all. Well, Breezy Bob, well, here you go. I got it. 
priest, like, how you doing, mama? I'm over here. <laughs> Finally got to where I need you. Uh, <laughs> right. Right. So we, 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 yeah, cause we got, cause that's what make that's what make people feel the music more, man. They don't understand the person behind the music. You know, I've been rocking with your music for a while, I've been loving your style, I've been crushing on you all on Instagram. So it's like what what really got you like really started? Like what because you got you dope on top of everything, but what what lit that fire when you make you start go go as hard as you go with music? <laughs> What's your sign? Mama? I'm a Capricorn. Okay. Oh, Capricorn. Yeah. You gotta be a Capricorn or a Taurus to be like that. Yeah. Yeah. Poor Leo. Poor Leo. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Leo. Right. Yeah, but that the music is that's been in me for as long as I can remember. So I don't know. Just I'm just excited about being able. I used to be like nervous to even. Let people know that that was my thing. So you know what I mean. It's it feels good to be able to pull it out and you know show people who you really are. What I, what I love what I love about you the most is what I would want from somebody in general is like you are who you say you are. You know what I mean? Just like that's what made me rock like Jeezy or certain cats. Earlier we talked about how certain things get put out there and then afterwards it's emulated. Yes. Whereas you are you are a blueprint, you know, like everything that you is, it's like you ain't you ain't trying to be nothing outside of what you is. And that's what makes your music so powerful and so wanting to want to be heard for real. Um and I just I, I like the rawness, you know, overall and just like that's what sells. When people really tap into their own individuality and just market that to the fullest. You know what I mean? Like when I listen to your music, it's just like I feel it. I know it's real. I would love to date her, but I think we would end up in jail together. <laughs> That's the only thing. Every time I'm like, damn, this girl so fine, she's so talented. But we don't end up in jail. I'm already on parole. If I fart in the stink, I'm going back. So I know. <laughs> The, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's too much power one and one and one. Right. Um, so what type of what type of what, what type of you talk about your makeup and things of that nature, entertainment wise? But this year, what are you looking to put your hands in outside of music, outside of what you normally do? Like you always on the mic. Is there anything behind the scenes you may have going on? But you just seem like that type. Yeah, I do. It's, I'm actually letting go of things. Um, I wear many hats. I'm in the real estate, I own too much property, I have a mobile food business. I'm good at a lot of things. I want to narrow it down. So I, my mom always tells me I'm gonna be the best at one thing. And I may not, I, I totally, you know, I agree with that, but you know, maybe not just one thing, but you, to really be good at something, you need to focus on it and hone in on it. You can't just ignore everything, you know what I mean? You gotta have a lane, like, so um, what I've really been doing lately is uh, I've been selling all my properties and um, I've been trying to let go of, of everything because I'm a, you know, I'm a business owner. So I've been trying to just sever all my ties so I can fully put myself into music because as long as I've been doing music, I've never, ever took it seriously. And I'm just now trying to, I mean, I, I felt, no matter what I say about it, I never took it seriously because I would be much further than I am. I've been taking it serious, the most serious I've ever taken it for about a year now. For a year. So, um, it's not, it's, you know, it's like now or never. I don't, I don't want to play around with it anymore. I don't have time for that. I, I want the money, which is what I'm good at doing, and I just want the money. <laughs> it's, 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 it will probably I just want, I want to do what I love by doing and make money doing that. That's it. And, and, and it will be easy to be sitting there always ask you a lot of questions as far as music goes. Mm -hmm. But one thing that I want to shed a light on that is so important, man, the way you dress, man. You are so flamboyant the way I like. <laughs> hey, but I'm just, it's, it's, not, it's not even a flirt to the fullest. You know what I mean? Like, but I'm just saying, like, Yo, I for fashion is sick though, mama. Like, that's something that, man, I gotta take my hat off to you for you. You put it together though, for real. You know what I mean? Like, Thank you. And it's not, it's, it's, I, I, I consider myself to have a good eye for fashion. Like, so when I see somebody else with that same eye, 
it's just like, be mindful of that. Yeah. Don't just think like, because I'm rocking this fur, it's because I like to, like just the, the, yeah, the so color yeah, coordination like, and everything is everything. Like, I appreciate you know? that. So that's something, that's if, you like, ain't, if, you ain't, if you ain't doing it consciously, that's something you might want to do. Right, that's cool, that is so cool. And you ain't always gotta be the boss necessarily. If you could find somebody who's trying to start a clothing line yeah. and just bring your naturalness to what they're trying to do and just help things unfold. Because I have, I'm, I'm just, I'm just having a couple pieces, but um, I'm working on. Do you right. happen to know? It's like that's what I'm doing. My boy, my boy, uh, Rick the Ruler. He, um, I love Rick the Ruler. That's my boy. Yeah. So, okay, so you know yeah, the Ladogon brand. Yeah, most definitely. Okay, so he collabing with Ladogon and Unicorn Mafia, and. Um, the clothing line is called Universal Law. And that's what we're working on. But I have not even told nobody about this like Universal Law. Oh, that's that's cool. awesome. That's going to be dope. I know that's going to be dope. Do you know Rick as well? No. He's so dope. He has a, such a dope soul in mind. And we connect so well on so many different levels. Like, we know each other from the streets too, but we just never, we never parted ways. Like, and I feel like now it's just time for two great minds to come to, to, to together. And um, you know, yeah. do something positive and dope. When y'all want to do the photo shoot, make sure y'all call Jr. and myself. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I'm, be the, I'm, I'm his assistant. You know, he's a beautiful model as well. Right. So. Oh yeah, <laughs> I thought you were pointing to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, this is a conversation going good. Yeah. 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 Oh, you like it. You like it as that might be. It's a funny story, right? That baby ain't coming in. It's, it's really not. Yeah, yeah. So, well, funny story. So we did a shoot. Uh, <coughs> the shoot was dope. Then we came back and did another shoot for the for a makeup line. And <laughs> it was dope. Ain't time if you put a makeup in that shoot. No, no, no. We, we got a lot of dope shots out of it. But man, I tell you, no. <laughs> no, he said no. I'll be there, Mama. Don't worry about it. No, no listen. She, nope. Tell I'm not him. going into detail, but just know that you know what I'm saying. Like we're not that. We're not cool. Just know I got that bag, the real one. Right. <laughs> I'll definitely be on set. Man, that shit was crazy. But um, you know, I, 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 look, that's a conversation for off, off, uh, off the line. <laughs> <laughs> After party. We'll blame because he will blame. Yeah, right. So after this, we'll be. Hey, hey, we'll, hold on, we'll, we'll. Listen, y'all want to talk about it. Yeah. Oh, we'll blame. That shit was on a whole different level, nigga. That shit was on a whole other level. We'll see. But, um, no, man, so, uh, whoop, 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 whoop. Your single, the um, collab that you have with LB, LB, oh young man, animal man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, LB is yeah, LB dope as hell, man. And um, everything that I've, that I've heard from him is dope. But then everything I've heard from you is really dope. So then when I heard from that single, I was like, what's up? Like, it, it sounded like a radio hit already. So um, did we? We got it. Oh, man. All right, so we're about to get into that real quick because I do know you have uh, things to handle. So uh, let's get ready to get to it, man. She go with the fashion. She dashing. She got all the niggas dancing. When she passed her, only concern is the ration. The fashion. She wore it. She never lied. And she made it happen. She really she bought the fashion. Hit it, do we call the set? All my baggage say the rhyme. I'm a boss, what I want. Tell it, 
guns, getting dirty sun. It's a ton of fun, I'm gorgeous, you can't afford it. It's a worth of fortune. In a few years, I bet I'm gonna make the fools list. I'm icy, you wanna wipe me, I'm so enticing. It's bust down, broke me on my wrist, it's kinda pricey. Niggas want it raw, I charge them 35 a key. I went to college, got the degrees, I swear that shit wasn't for me. I shot the dirt, I'm in the streets, and the fast lane don't keep no need. I'm riding for and no 4 g that show OG. I work for me. All my life been taught to drug, I really got it out the mud. Pull my racks, I pull your plug. Let's make sure that's understood. All in love, and you just met her. She's so dope, you got a sweater. Different breed and never go get her. Take a special guy, get her. Need a nigga with his way up. Only one to get his pick up. Understand that I look busy. You come second, we can't break up. Tell them hoes to keep the hate up. I'm second, all this way up. I'm a trap, so I gotta stay up. Go to sleep, baby, don't wait up. Me, you're gonna lose. He love me, don't make them choose. I'm up at Girl, I broke the news, I might have bought some follow rules Back and killer on the news, down to Karen, Jimmy Choo Aero, Wayne, Coco, Chanel, so many brands do I choose Come with baggage But I just wanted you to feel comfortable in knowing that um, it was okay to me. And we're, whether, you know, it was right or wrong, like, we would figure it out together. So, uh, <laughs> but will I ever, like, do that with you again? Hell fucking no. Listen, man, it's levels to shit. Look, hold on. It's levels to shit, and I know I was not... <laughs> Suitable to be on that level. <laughs> like, 
Like that shit was like way too much. Uh, listen, mm. <laughs> that shit should come with a warning letter. <laughs> but, uh,